$500 free roll if you guess what I have. $2,200. My hat. $500,000 free roll. $500. $500? You get a thousand free roll if you guess what I have. Rough gas fill. Duan asking for a count from Phil Ivy, who's re raised him with 10 8 suited. Juan reaching for the big chips and he'll re-raise to 29-6. Duan has just 7-8 off suit here. Little does Phil know it, but he's got the best hand, and he's got Dwan dominated. Oh. Ivy re-raises to 84 and change, and Dwan insta-folds. I wish we have a time bank. No, sir. Back with more cash game action when we return to Las Vegas. Field. Shavik once won 10 satellite seats at the World Series of Poker in one year. Action over to Patrick Bruel, who's looking at a 9-7 of hearts. A little tough to play that hand from early position, but Patrick will. And he calls the big blind. Clint Richardson foals, as does Mark Warner, over to Phil Ivey. Phil Ivey looking at pocket fours. Pairs are great and no limit because pairs make sets and sets break people. Over to Cecilia Mortensen, 7-6 of diamonds. Suited connectors. And she calls as action heads over to the small blind, Captain Tom. He's got a queen six off suit. Option. Just a half bet, easy to call. Four players already in the hand as we head over to Tony G. Ace King, big slick for Tony G in the big blind. Tony won't want to play ace king against four opponents from the big blind, so he's going to probably raise, hoping to lose some of the opposition. Tony G considering his options. 2700. And he makes it 2700. Patrick Bruel quickly steps out of the way. Phil Ivey next to act. Phil's calling because he has both position and a pair, and he's looking at Tony G's entire stack here. Those are the odds he's, he's working with. Captain Tom gets out of the way, so these two players go heads up to the flop, and the flop comes five, ace, four, and a set of fours for Phil Ivey. Trouble for Tony G. He's made top pair, but Phil's lying in wait with a set. Tony G checks. Over to Phil Ivey. And he bets 5,000. Phil bets his strong hands. Tony G trying to figure out what to do with his top pair, top kicker, and Phil Ivey across the table. I can't believe he's going to get a read off of Phil. Phil always looks exactly the same. Tony G taking his time. He's reaching for his chips, and he raises to 15,000. I don't like the check raise. In general, check raising a no limit is not the strongest play. You're giving a lot of information, and you're not getting much information. Phil still seems generically strong to Tony G. Phil quickly calls. If Phil Ivey just calls in that situation, the alarm bell should go off. Here comes the turn. It's a queen of clubs. You see the check mark next to Phil Ivey. Tony G is drawing dead. He just doesn't know it. 
He checks over to Phil Ivey. He checked. Maybe he senses some danger here. Phil Ivey reaching for his stack. And he comes out firing. Because Phil bets his strong hands and his bluffs and everything in between, a bet from Phil does not give you any information. But that's all Tony G has to work with. My goal. And he goes all in with about 32,000 remaining in chips. I call. Ouch. Phil Ivey calls and Tony G's tournament is over. He check-raised Phil, drawing dead. He check-raised him a second time. And Tony G sees the sad sight of the set of fours, a meaningless ace on the river. Tony G got cute, and now he's got to get out. Tony G will finish in 45th place for Phil Ivey. He'll take in the first six-figure pot at our featured table, and the rich get richer. It's beautiful to be Phil Ivey. He plays great, and he induces good players to play poorly against him. As Tony G is his latest victim at the table today. A day in which Phil Ivey put on a master clinic in poker. Winning with good hands, winning with bad hands, and everything in between. First time you saw him, right? That's, first time yeah. Yeah. That's pretty special, right? He's letting him know. He's like, well, why are you looking? Uh. Successful bluff by Lex, pretending he's interested yeah. in Daniel's story. <laughs> Barry's going to step out here and raise to 5,500 with Queen 10 offsuit. Phil Ivey suspects something. Raises Barry. We have another air Ivy hand. Ivy suspects that Barry was out of line and he's right. But it looks like Lex, who's got a decent hand, suspects that they're both out of line and he's right. Look at them, they, they look like suspects. Nice play by Lex, 51-6. How much more are you playing? I think Phil Ivey's posturing here, asking Lex how much he has. 140 something? 130, 140 more? Doesn't want Barry to know he raised him with air. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Phil Ivey just went all in with a five deuce offsuit. I don't believe it. I thought you were just angry at Barry. I am. <laughs> that is one of the great bluffs in the history of high stakes poker. What a move. All these super good spots that keep coming up. Is this 50 good. each one? Yeah, it's like, it's, just, it's a really good spot though. Like. It's never a super good spot when you're against a superpower. Stuck a little more now. There's now two players playing for the million dollars first place money. $600,000 to the runner-up. Chip count now just about 4-1 to one in the favor of Phil Ivey. Paul Jackson, however, has breached that magic million chip mark. And were he to double through, we'd be looking at a real horse race here. Well, it's such a different game. Two-handed here. On the flop. Pair of jacks and a seven. Ivy's still the leader with that queen eight suited. Three hearts out there for him. 80,000 is the bet. And that's a pretty standard poker play, Barry. The big stack on a flop like this in an unraised pot wants to keep making tester bets. Try to find out if the little guy connected in any way. And with that kind of flop, it looks unlikely. So Phil Ivey says, okay, I've got queen high, but I'll take a stab at it. And look at this! Re-raised by Jackson. Wow. To 170,000. Now, I, I like the play because Paul Jackson is willing to get into a poker match here. He's not going to just sit around and wait to flop the nuts. 
This may be the line in the sand here for Paul Jackson. Phil Ivey, though, if he really thinks deeply about this, might be asking himself, well, now wait a minute, if this guy had a jack in his hand, would he re-raise me here? Probably not. So what the heck is he doing? So he's thinking it, and the question is, what? are we overthinking? A re-raise! Well, there you are. Re-raises to 320,000. It's right back in the face of Paul Jackson. We are watching some poker here, Barry. Both guys with nothing. Phil Ivey's nothing is a little bit better than Paul Jackson's, but <laughs> nobody connected with that flop, and here they are, raise, re-raise, re-raise. Nice. Oh my goodness, Jackson <laughs> is re-raising. What the heck is going on here? Re-raising. Another 150,000, now it's up to 470. Almost a million chips in this pot now. This is incredible. And you can almost hear the wheels turning in the head of Phil Ivey. Is this for real? Right, and, and I'm thinking Phil Ivey <laughs> has got to fold here. Yeah. I mean, is his opponent going to raise him twice with nothing? After Phil Ivey has shown strength. How much do you have left? 360. 380. 360, 380. 380,000 is what Jackson finally arrives at. Barry, let's put this in perspective. We're looking at a million chip pot and both players have nothing. We are looking at two guys bluffing with nothing. Both of them. Who's going to blink? With two cards to come. I don't think he's going to blink. I don't see how he can possibly continue in this hand. Everything Paul Jackson has done... All in. What? <laughs> That's why we're here and they're there. Absolutely astonishing poker. Is that which point blinking is there? It's a good lay down, isn't it? He said it was a good lay down, and he's going to do just that. And Phil Ivey is the guy who did not blink. Watching this hand was like witnessing great art. It's absurd and wonderful at the same time. I, it's just mind blowing what we just witnessed. Phil looks down at eight seven off on the button, and another raise to eleven thousand. Ivey raising from the button. The worst position in the Rio right now, lot is anyone in the blinds or anyone at Phil Hamby's table. Bernard Perner with pocket deuces. He lost about 55,000 chips to fill on the first hand. Looks like he's going to try to get them back right now. But he's saving time. His sunglasses are already on. Heads up to the flop. It is seven jack, seven ivy out. Flops Perner again, trip sevens. Perner, first to act, left with his pocket deuces. That's 22,000. Ivy's not the best player, Lon, because he gets cards. He wins when he's got nothing, and when he flops the goods, he knows how to maximize his earnings. Phil with a flat call there. Turn card is hit eight. Ivy with a check mark. He now has a full boat. Boy, this just isn't fair. Perner now checks. I don't think Phil sweats. Phil will try to make Perner sweat. And makes it 40,000 to stay in the hand. I thought Ivy might have checked and let Perner maybe take a stab at the pot on the river, but he correctly determined he'd get a call from Perner right there. Perner with the check call. River card is a seven. Quads, are you kidding me? Phil's gone from rags to trips to a full house to quads. He's improved on every street. Perner checks again. Now all Phil Ivy is trying to do is calculate how much he can bet to get a call. Can he get more from Perner? He bets 120,000. Phil's calculations say 80% of the pot could make